One of the most important aspects of any dinosaur survival game is, without much surprise, the dinosaurs themselves. They are the front and center of their respective game and the main attractor to the title's targeted audience. There's a vast amount of factors that must be considered while creating a roster, and one of the most crucial is their visuals. Dinosaurs are extinct for millions and millions of years, with only their fragmented bones left behind, and even though technology has drastically improved over the most recent decades, we still don't know with 100% certainty how they looked like. We have some evidence, we can simulate and speculate, we can deduce based on their modern descendants, but as of right now, it is practically impossible for us to reconstruct one of these animals flawlessly. Of course, in media this presents a problem. How can we display these creatures if we don't know for sure how they looked like? Well, in the beginning our knowledge about them was unsurprisingly very limited, so the outcome was less than stellar. Over time we got more and more information about them, more fossils were found, we got better tools and we knew how to analyze them better, so we eventually got to a point that we could showcase a more faithful representation of their physical appearance. Sure, most of the time they might look inaccurate to today's standards, but you can still see that these two are both Carnotaurus, even though they are 20 years apart. Except Spino, cause Jesus lord this animal has more iterations than FIFA at this point. In video games, however, things are not so strict. Anatomies are a lot more open to interpretation due to some very specific parameters that mostly exist only in games. And we can already see it in the genre, where multiple titles have some overlapping dinosaur species that possess distinct visual differences. One game in particular though always had a level of criticism regarding their dinosaur's designs significantly higher than its competition and is frequently a topic of discussion within the community. And so we ask the question, are the aisle designs bad? To answer this question we need to understand what classifies the design of an animal as good or bad to begin with. First and foremost, I need to clarify that while this may be a very subjective topic, we can't forget that design is a studied skill. Everyone can have their personal perspective towards the appearance of a particular dinosaur or dinosaurs. You are free to consider the path's roster ugly or the Isles dinosaurs unappealing, but to an extent their designs can be categorically described as good or bad. You can like a bad design, but it would be disingenuous saying that it's good just because you like it. Just a small note. Alright, let's move on. The iteration of a specific dino needs to be easily identifiable as the intended species. If a Stegosaurus model doesn't look like a Stegosaurus, then it is objectively a bad model, because the design itself is not properly representing what it's supposed to represent. Now, keep in mind that this is not synonymous with accuracy. Accuracy, in this case, is the concept of a design that perfectly replicates the current theory of that animal's physical appearance. That is not what we are talking about here. What we want is to know the fundamental components that make a specific animal identifiable. Example, Ceratosaurus. This beautiful medium-sized theropod is currently present in the majority of the dinosaur games we play. All visually unique and yet all easily recognizable as a Cerato. Why is that? For that we need to categorize the several anatomical aspects that classify an animal as this dinosaur. Let's start with the basics. We know that Cerato is a carnivorous theropod, therefore a bipedal dinosaur, medium-sized, possesses thick bone structures named osteoderms throughout its back, an oversized head, long teeth, and its most notorious feature, their three head crests. All these features combined are the bare minimum that make Sarah easily recognizable. You could emphasize some aspects more than others, but as long as all these are present, most people could effortlessly tell which dinosaur is supposed to be. While this is extremely important to nail down while designing a dinosaur, we need to take other aspects into consideration. 
the game's theme and aesthetic are other factors that contribute to the design's quality. In a good game, all assets have a level of aesthetic consistency that matches with its theme and that is intentional. It not only displays the quality of the product, it also enhances immersion and improves suspension of disbelief while playing, optimizing the user experience. The Isle was always criticized for having inaccurate models or straight up fictional depictions of certain dinosaur species. One good example of such is Scanova's The Isle Design Tier List made roughly a year ago, where he is heavily critical of the roster's design. While at the end of the day this is a tier list and therefore it is his objective point of view regarding the Isle in this particular topic, I believe he missed a specific point that could make him reconsider some of his critiques. In his video he mentions the heavy lack of accuracy on a large portion of the roster, with some specific species being straight up Jurassic Park ripoffs. And to that I say, you are absolutely right. However, there's some missing context here that I think we need to take into account. Are the Isle's designs meant to be accurate or realistic? No. But how am I so sure about that, you may ask? That has all to do with the game's theme. For the little that we know, the Isle's lore consists of a mysterious organization named Apollo Engineering that, at some point in time, conducted an extremely ambitious set of genetic manipulation experiments executed in a remote and unknown archipelago. It is implied that the Org created and monitored numerous prehistoric creatures, more specifically the dinosaurs we control as a player, although their motives and goal of these experiments is uncertain. However, we do know that their intentions were somewhat military-focused, since later on strains were created using dinosaur DNA as a baseline. These strains have lethal and dangerous mutations that make the creature more intelligent and powerful, all of them for combat purposes. It isn't specifically confirmed, but there is a theory that the original set of experiments ended in a catastrophic failure that forced the company to evacuate the island for a period of time, leaving all the structures, equipment and assets behind, with the dinosaurs in particular roaming free. Furthermore, we recently got the indirect confirmation that the species on the island are naturally mutating, a conclusion that we can take from a comment on the Gallimimus dossier implying that the original galleys made by Apollo were feathered and displayed very different behavior than their current counterparts. A good portion of the roster does indeed have a naturalistic design, however, we know for sure that lore-wise they were made for military purposes, not realism. Now, you might have noticed a pattern here. A private company that genetically engineers dinosaurs on an island in the middle of nowhere that ends up in disaster? Hmm, I think I have seen that one before. The dev's inspiration from the Jurassic Park series is palpable, especially regarding the most famous species present on that franchise like Utah, Rex, Gally, Trike and a few others. These dinos do look like GP ripoffs because the lore itself is extremely similar to Jurassic's narrative. However, to be fair, the Isle does have a good reason for their designs. These are genetically engineered creatures made for military experiments that are now naturally mutating in the wild due to their volatile genetic nature. That is why their designs seem to be all over the place, because they represent the chaotic state and man-made origins. These are monsters in dinosaur clothing, and the game's narrative is showing us in real time their depraved evolution into something that we don't know how it will turn out. Could they be better? Absolutely. There's always a place for improvement. But for that premise, the Isle's designs are very good. But what do you guys think? Do you have any particular reason for disliking the Isle's roster? Let me know in the comments below. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server for memes, and stuff, and I hope to see you all next week.